Hello Earthlings, Neutron Sound here, back again with the second of a double whammy album review. This week, uh, yesterday, I examined Matt Jaffe's debut album, California's Burning, but today we're going to be examining the uh, latest effort from uh, some new psychedelic rock titans, Temples, uh, their new sophomore album, Volcano. These guys are, as I said, a psychedelic rock band from uh, Kettering, Northamptonshire, England. They um, released their masterpieceful debut album, Sun Structures, in uh, 2014, featuring the smash hit Shelter Song and a collection of other great songs, courtesy of uh, singer-guitarist James Bagshaw and bassist Tom Walmsley. And it definitely had a very 60s feel to it, which is kind of turned down on this new album. It doesn't exactly have to do with the increased writing contribution from keyboardist Adam Smith, who writes or co-writes half the songs on this album. But even on the ones he doesn't write, his keyboards are brought much more to the fore than James's guitar, and they're clearly expanding their influences beyond the 60s. So let's just get to the music. All right, track one is the lead single, Certainty. Appropriately enough, the lyrics are about uncertainty or longing for certainty. It's a much smaller scale of the themes Kevin Parker was dealing with on Tame Impala's album Currents, but on a much more personal, uh, not a romantic scale at all. Just uh, in wanting to know that there is certainty in your life, and you know what's going to happen next, and you can get comfortable, but uh, enough about the lyrics. The music has got a much funkier beat, um, makes me want to dance. It's a harbinger of the new sound, the new keyboard-dominated sound. Adam synths are there right from the get-go. The opening riff is a synth riff. I'm sure there's some guitar in here. And, you know, the, the opening melody is on a synth patch, uh, kind of similar to the one that Adam used on Ankh, a uh, B-side from Sun Structures. And James's vocal melody is also really great. He has a nice... Uh... I can't do it justice. But it comes in before the first chorus, and it, and it doesn't come back. It leaves me wanting more in a good way. Wanting more, but at the same time knowing it's perfect. Like, I'm reaching out for more and I don't get it, and, and it tickles the spine. And uh, the chorus on this song soars, which is a theme that's going to recur on a lot of these songs. They've all got really epic-sounding soaring choruses. All Join In is kind of the opposite. It's got this sort of weird electro shuffle drum intro followed by a sort of epic synth thing. But then it picks up into a sort of keep in the dark type groove, but a little less hooky than uh, the actual song off of Sun Structures. Speaking of Sun Structures, the title track of that album has a similar groove to the next track on Volcano, I Wanna Be Your Mirror. Uh, except this one has some sort of prog rock chord rhythms and um, a nice sort of driving groove with some heavy synth bass along with Tom's bass. But the chorus drops into a sort of halftime feel with a sort of Baroque flute type synth which adds another hook to the song. And there's a nice fuzz guitar, which was kind of absent from Sun Structures. I mean, it was, it was on Mesmerize, but in the high register. This is the first time we hear a really prominent mid-range distorted guitar. And there are some nice odd meters, uh, especially before the second chorus, where there's sort of an odd meter guitar break thing, which is delicious. Oh, the Savior introduces an acoustic guitar for the first time on the album, and it's got some great rhymes in the lyrics, mirrored by the nice rhythms in the melody. The lyrics could be about me, although they're definitely not, because they've never met me. It's about some other guy, probably made up, called 
Mr. Sound. And James also hits some really high notes at the end due to the key change. Uh, I'm not going to attempt to replicate those. Born Into the Sunset has some nice fuzzed lead guitar at the beginning. Uh, it's actually quite reminiscent of Mesmerize. It's kind of a funky cousin of Mesmerize, again supported by these sparkling synths. Uh, there's some, I think, sampled drums at the beginning before Sam Toms' real drums uh, come in. How Would You Like to Go was written entirely by Adam Smith. And uh, you can tell uh, from the way that if you thought the keyboards dominated the last five songs, wait until you listen to this one. It uh, starts with this stern Mellotron chord and James's ethereal affected voice. There's some phaser, some echo, some chorus or double tracking, maybe both. This song is almost entirely synth based. Although Sam's drums come in at some point to give it some additional forward motion. It's one of the more sublime moments on the album. Open Air is a complete contrast. It's a fast, punky shuffle, uh, again with some synths, uh, and some heavy bass from Tom, especially in the chorus where it does kind of a different thing to the guitars. I like the way James's vocal melody glides over the driving uh, shuffle tempo. It's also nice the way it opens up at the end by taking away the drums and just letting the chords breathe. In My Pocket um, is another song with an acoustic guitar. Uh, nothing particularly special about this one apart from the fact that James's voice kind of reminds me of John Lennon's at the beginning. Track 9, Celebration, has another soaring chorus. This time, a bit like a hymn. Celebration! And again, it's got the sparkling synths and some uh, epic-sounding Tom-heavy drum beats, appropriately enough from a guy called Sam Toms. It got sort of an ank-like melody on the Mellotron or Mellotron-like synth, another really gliding, soaring thing. You've got some unusual drum beatage at the end where you've got like a half-time feel and a regular time feel going at the same time, almost against each other. Mystery of Pop is not the poppiest number, but still a good song. It's a symphonic number. It sounds a bit like Stereolab playing Beethoven, if you know who Stereolab were. It's got some drums reminiscent of the song's sun structures, and I like how, um, how many words are in the melody, and James spits them out nicely in his way. It's not often you get temples deliberately sounding this wordy. The last two tracks are possibly the best, although they've got some competition from certainty. Roman Godlike Man, I've heard a lot of people say that this melody may have been taken from Grant Chester Meadows by Pink Floyd. I mean, it is identical, down to the key, I think. Appropriately enough, both of these songs were written by the bassist from each band. Also, if you're gonna steal, steal from the best. But uh, this sounds nothing like Grant Chester Meadows otherwise. Um, and the guitars really hit you. This is the most guitar-heavy song on the album by far. And it's a great song with a great melody. You've got some nice harmonized guitars from James in the middle that sound uh, even more like Brian May uh, when they play the song live. And you got some nice harmonies in fifths, slightly Gregorian chant reminiscent. And this song would have uh, fit in perfectly on Sun Structures if it had acoustic drums instead of the electronic ones they have. And finally we come to the last track, Stranger Be Forgotten, another soaring chorus song, and uh, like certainty, a rumination on the future, and uh, whether or not how much they will be remembered, or if at all they will be remembered, how strange do you have to be to go down in history, and there's pressure to be strange, but also to be normal, so what is it? is basically what they're asking. And um, I love how the you've got this descending major scale lick in the guitar at the beginning, but uh, in the pre-chorus they do like a surreptitious modulation so that when the chorus hits, you know, it really lifts you up, although you don't quite realize 
you're in a new key because the modulation happened through a suspended chord, so you're not really aware of it, but you do feel the lift that the chorus gets. And James's falsetto really works here, but I said, you know, you feel the lift of the chorus and you don't really realize you're in a new key until suddenly the guitar riff comes back and it's like, oh, this has got a lot of sharps. Oh wait, that's the original key. It's uh, deliciously jarring, especially at the end where the last chord of the chorus kind of fades out really quickly at the same time that you get these echoes of the opening riff. And um, definitely one of the more sublime tracks. One of the most sublime tracks. So is this album as good as Sun Structures? I say yes. But that's just my opinion. I'm dying to know yours. If you've listened to this album, what do you think of it? Tell me in the comments. But um, all in all, I would say Temples have proved that they don't need to sound straight out of the 60s to prove that they are great songwriters and uh, among the best of the 2010s. But until next time, album review time rears its head. This is Neutron Sound signing off. Go forth and be strange.